Ooh, a dreamy slow motion shot of the bike. That's a little bit shaky. I mean the shot, not the bike. That should be used in the in some sort of a montage. Of the bike and the shot, I guess. Anyhow, if you remember, I was trying and apparently I am succeeding and resurrecting my old Scott because you can see I'm going to zoom in on this particular feature. I manufactured. <sighs> Shake, shake, shake. All right. I manufactured, and by I, I mean I designed, machined, and then someone welded them for me. New states for my for my scout, and I am bloody proud of them because they actually work and are almost in alignment. However, the focal point of this particular shot is the drivetrain because I'm doing something that's apparently forbidden in the world of cycling today. Focus, you machine, you. Anyhow, let me show you what I have done here. Count them, I dare you. Count them, and you can see that I have set up 12 by 3. 12 by 3. 3 by 12. By 3. By 12. Am I getting the point across? And you know what? It actually works. It works brilliantly. To be honest, however, it get, it's getting rainy, so I guess I need to return to the workshop. Oh, and by the way, before I go, listen to this. You need to be here to truly appreciate how noisy and annoying this really is. All right, so here we are back at the shop, and if you are observant, you most likely noticed that some things have changed. Obviously, I am recording this a few days after the previous clip. Or maybe I am recording this a few days before. Huh. Write in the comments what you think Illuminati is up to with all this time travel. Anyhow, uh, I would like to show you how this works, but first let's go through all the equipment here. So, at the front, I've got the uh, Alto AX12 speed shifter. This is a Shimano Dior uh, RDM615 with a long cage. This is the E13 uh, triple crankset, the SLX front mech, Shimano Altus C10 30 year old front shifter which has a this interesting micro trimming feature which is missing in the modern derailers, uh, X Cobra hub and uh, I think this is ZTTO 12 speed lightweight petrol colored 12 speed cassette 1134. So in essence this is a traditional 44, uh, 32, 22 front and 1134 at the back. So let's go through all the gears. But first, I'm not going to be very vigorous about it because the X Cobra hub is obnoxiously loud and I don't want to get deafened by it. Okay, let's go through it. Ouch. So here we are at the faster gear. Let's go to other direction. All right, let's switch to the 32. And the switch wasn't perfect, but that's because, huh, that's because the E13 chain rings are absolutely horrible. Anyhow, let's go through all the gears on the 32. Shut up. And now let's go to 22 and this is not going to be as rosy as before because I'm going to get because I'm going to get rubbing on the derailleur cage on the small small uh, combinations. This is as low as I can go without the rubbing over here. However, I'm not really needing this gear and this uh, this cog combination. If I'm going to be using it at all, and I'm most likely never going to use the small ring. Well, I only uh, am going to use it with the biggest cogs on the cassette. But as you can see, this is 
this is plenty usable. And I can use the big big combination without an issue. So let's discuss why this doesn't really make sense. Alright, so regarding the topic of this video, imagine that you've been burdened with a task of finding yourself a sweet, perfectly balanced drivetrain, but with a little bit of a caveat. It's supposed to be a single speed. Now it's presupposed to make it a little easier that you're not living in epic alpine somewhere or somewhere perfectly flat. It's just rolling hills everywhere, but nothing too extreme. Anyhow, you've been given a stack of cogs, a stack of chain rings and away you go. After some period of experimentation you're going to find that special ratio which is not too high, not too low, allows you to ride just about everywhere you want to go. Sometimes you suffer a little bit because it's too steep, sometimes you are outspun because, well, it's too, too low. But after a while the conditions of the experiments have changed. Now you are able to use one of these gizmos and you can add two cogs to your, well, now cassette. So now you have a sweet 3x1x3 by by three. and what are you going to do? I'm guessing that you're going to add a little smaller gear and a little bigger gear. So now you have a lower and higher ratio around your, well, perfect gear. Now considering the terrain you might be adding a little smaller or much smaller that's not really relevant. Point being is that you still continue to ride the same terrain so you're more or less going to use mostly that single ratio you have chosen at the beginning. Now let's follow this logic a little further. Now we can add five gears, six, seven, eight. You're going to find out at certain time that there is no point in adding any higher gears because you just can't spin them and there is no point in adding any lower gears because you don't have heels to ride them. So you're going to be only limited by two things. One, just how precise you want to have this ratio selection and two, how many cogs you can add. We are currently at 12 cogs and you can possibly get a core knob cassette if you really want to. What I'm getting at is that when you are selecting the gear, that ratio for that single speed at the beginning, that was not too high, not too low, almost perfect most of the time, you are actually following a certain emergent phenomenon. What is it? If you are following your typical riding habits, the terrain you're riding on, your ability to push those watts, the type of bike you're riding, you will find out that you are spending most of your time on a fairly narrow range of speeds. If you were to map that range of speeds you are following most of the time to an actual gearing ratio, you would find out that right dead in the center is that magical gear ratio that is sufficient most of the time considering your riding. So it's obviously sometimes a little bit too high, sometimes a little bit too low. Sometimes you can't climb some epic climb, sometimes you can't spin to some ungodly speed, but for most of your riding it seems sufficient. And this phenomenon is the chief reason why you are always throwing away a cassette when two or three or four cogs are totally worn out, especially one or two cogs are totally worn out, but the rest of the cassette seems to be fine. Well, it's pretty simple to understand. Considering there is always a range of speeds you are most likely spending most of your time at, you are going to be selecting a gear that is matching those speeds, which means that the wear is going to cluster around two or three or four cogs. There is also another side to this phenomenon. If you're going to give people a bicycle of however many chain rings and a cassette, which has about 200-300% range, not more, because if you have more range you are brute forcing the issue, that's not what we want to do. However, give them something like 200-300% or range and on one of the chain rings, on their drivetrain, they get the central ratio in the middle of the cassette. Once they engage that chain ring, they will never use the front derailleur again. And the reason for this is fairly simple. Switching front gears is quite involved. Obviously the ratio change is quite significant. You need to let go of the pedals, you need to scan the road or trail ahead to know whether you can actually commit to it. So why go through the trouble if the ratio we are going to be using is available at uh, two or three clicks of the rear shifter. No one's going to bother with it unless they are a seasoned cyclist and they know what they're doing. And now of course you should say that there is a hole in my theory because what about climbing? 
Well, climbing is quite involved. There's this heuristic that's 10 to 1, which says that for every minute of descent, you're going to be spending 10 minutes climbing, right? Well, not really. But obviously, it requires some amendment to this hypothesis or this model. Well, you're still be going to be spending most of your time on that particular range of ratios, which I discussed before. However, you're going to be spending also a very significant amount of time on climbing gears. And those ranges are usually not overlapping. So you're going to have ratios for riding and ratios for climbing. And now you should start understanding what I am actually getting at, because all of this mental self-indulgence has a point. If there is a set of speeds that you are following most of the time, which are for general riding, and there is a set of speeds you are going to be spending most of your time climbing, you have two distinct ranges of ratios that are useful. So what about the demise of the triple? Alright, so this is your typical 3 by whatever drivetrain. This one's a 3 by 12 but you already know that. Imagine that your central ratio is something about 32 by something in the middle of this cassette, this one I think, 11, no, 18, something like that. Obviously in this arrangement, as we know from before, you're going to be spending most of your time on 32 and the entire cassette. So after, after some while you're going to know that you're never using the big ring, so you're going to take it off and use a bar guard, because that's obvious. However, if the central ratio of your particular bike and terrain and whatnots is 44 by whatever in the middle of the cassette is, you're going to know that you are always using the big ring, even if it's, well, quite difficult because you're using it cross-chained, or you're going to be switching to the middle ring and the middle and the biggest curve on the cassette is going to be too tall for your riding. So you're going to be noting that you are never using the small ring, but you probably can get away with something a bit smaller than this one, because the 4411 is quite tall. So what happens if the central ratio should be 38 in a particular case? Well, this is 44, this is 32, none of this fits. So what's going to happen is that the cyclist is going to be switching to the big ring and using the big cocks, or switching to the middle ring and using the small cocks. And it's going to be annoying because he's going to be switching most of the time and front derailleur is quite involved and, well, that's not really ergonomical. Moreover, if uh, the central ratio is between gears, then there is a very strong chance that the climbing gear is also going to be between the 22 and 32. So he's being, so he's being forced to be switching between those two as well. And, from, and what you can take from all of this is that in none of those cases a triple was a solution to get the perfect gearing because either you would have excessive amount of gears because either the big ring is not needed or the small ring is not needed or you would be forced to switch between gears but never be able to find the one that actually fits that allows you to forget about the involvement of the front derailleur. And that is a reason why a triple needed to die because in none of the cases I have shown you which f covers approximately 95% of use cases for a bicycle or this mountain bicycle, a triple wouldn't fit their needs. It would either be excessive because either the small ring isn't needed or the big ring isn't needed, or it would be uh, hitting precisely between the gears that are required for that particular cyclist. A triple was always a brute force solution to give you all the gears you need, however not the gears you want to have access to, because a double which uh, the big ring hits the central ratio and the small ring is uh, available for climbing, or a single ring with sufficiently wide cassette that follows all of the gearing choices you might be wanting, is always a better solution than a triple. There are very few use cases where a triple makes sense. And there you go, I hope you didn't get lost in my diatribe because I have this dreadful feeling that I wasn't really clear about it, but in a nutshell, a triple was something that was a band-aid not having enough range on the cassette in times of 5 or 6 speed freewheels, once we've gotten to 8, once we've gotten to the 11 tooth cog, once we've got the 300% cassette, it was essentially doomed, it was, well, it had to go away, there was simply no pattern of shifting that would make a triple viable. 
obviously cycling is a very traditional sport so it will take some time for it to die and unfortunately a double which I think is a better solution but that's not really the point here also going away after all it kind of makes sense because the more cogs you have on the cassette the less reason there is to use the front derailleur and if you're fine with fairly coarse selection of gears then I guess 12 speed 1150 is way more than you actually need or are able to effectively utilize anyhow I hope you like this video as much as I like recording it because this self-indulgent thinking about curing is something I enjoy. I hope to see you on the next video, share, like, subscribe and all that good things and I hope to see you on the next one. I just noticed that whenever I say I hope to see you on the next one with this head movement, what's up with that?